Hey, we're going to take a look now at how we can build a simple search box using Vue.js. Now on this code sandbox example, which you see here, over on the right hand side is what we're going to be building. We're going to create a pretty straightforward app with some simple blog posts. There's blog post one and blog post two. We can also add as many as we would like. Up at the top, we're going to create a simple text input where the user can type in a letter, a word or a phrase. And this will filter down all of the posts, which includes that particular word. So here we type in Java, and we see the blog posts are filtered to include this phrase. A search feature can be a pretty complex piece of code if we wanted to, but for something like this, a simple filter will be more than enough. So to create this, I'm going to go over to codesandbox.io and create a new view sandbox. This is going to give us the basic view structure and it doesn't include anything to do with our blog just yet. We just have the simple main.js where we initiate our view instance. Inside of our components, we have a hello world. I'm going to remove this just to keep things simple. And also if we go into the app.view, we'll also need to remove any reference to this hello world too. So we can remove the component import the component registration, and also inside of our template too. We don't need this logo, we can also remove this, and we now have a blank Vue.js project. So to begin, let's create a new component in the components folder, click on the new file, and this is going to be our post.view. This post.view will be the container for each one of our individual blog posts. So let's start by creating our template, Inside here, we can add a article tag, which is going to be the wrapper for each blog post. But now we'll simply say hi, add our script down at the bottom. And we can leave this empty just for now. So we don't see this in the screen at the moment because we need to import this and register this in the component where we want this to display. So we want to use the main app.view the first thing to do up at the top of the script is to import our component. So this was import post. This is in dot slash component. The name of post. We then need to register this inside of our view instance, and then we can display this inside of our app. Okay, so now this is in the main app dot view file. We see that the word of hi is displayed inside the browser. So our component has successfully been registered, but we don't want to display some static text such as hi. We're going to create some blog posts and use this component to output the contents. Still inside of the app.view, just below the components, we can add a data property, which is going to store all of our dynamic data. In our case, we're going to create the blog posts. This is going to be an array of objects. We need to add an ID to each one of these. I'm going to go for one. The blog post title of post one. And also the blog post content, which we'll add in the body. Let's go for Vue.js is cool. Then we'll copy this object and paste this just below to create a second blog post. The ID for this one is going to be two. Post two and we'll change this to be JavaScript. So of course, if we save this, we don't see anything different in the browser. We now need to loop through each one of these blog posts and I'll put the post component for each one. To do this in Vue.js, we create a for loop using the v4 directive. So just for now, we'll remove our component. We'll create a div, which is going to be a wrapper and we'll say v4 post in posts, and then close off our div below. Inside of here, we can now paste in our component. So this is going to loop through all of the posts, which is in our data property, and store each one inside of the variable called post. To make this work, we also need to give this a key as an attribute, and the key for each one of these posts is going to be post.id, since this is a unique value for each post. 
this unique key is added to each post inside of the loop so we can more efficiently update when things change. Let's give this a refresh and we now should see the word hi displayed twice in the browser. This is because we loop through two different posts and display our post component twice. And we now see this output twice in the browser. So this is not exactly what we want. We want to display the contents of our posts just below. So the way we can do this is to pass the post data as a prop. Since this is dynamic, we can use the colon and we can pass the post prop to be equal to the post, which is the variable for each one of our blog posts. So save this. And now if we go over to the components and into our post, we now have access to these props. The first thing we need to do inside of our script is to declare the props which we are receiving as an array. The name of the prop is the post. So now instead of the static data of high, we can now output our dynamic data in between the double curly braces. So first of all, a level three heading, which is going to be for the blog post title, open up the double curly braces, and we can now access this post, which you see here. And then the title property. So we see post one and post two. Below this, inside of the P elements, we can output the post body, which is the contents of our blog post. So this is all now working and we can now move on to the filter. We're going to add the filter inside of the app.view. So just above our loop and still within the app, we can create our input with the type of text. And as an attribute, we're going to add vModel. I set this to a value of search. The model allows us to set up two way data binding with a data property called search. We don't have this just yet. So let's add this just above our posts. Search is going to be initially an empty string and anything which we type inside of the input is then going to be saved inside of this search variable. So now we have this search value. We need to get all of the blog posts, which is just below, and then filter them using this search term. So now we have this search term. We're going to make use of a computed property to keep an eye on any updates. So let's add the computed section. And I'm going to call this the filter post. So the job of this computed section is going to be to keep an eye on any updates to our search value. And then we're going to filter out the blog posts which match this particular value. This needs to return a value. So to begin, we're going to access this.posts and then call the JavaScript filter method. Each one of these posts is going to be stored in the value of post. And then we want to check if the post.body, which is basically the content of our blog post, we want to check if this includes the search term. So we can use the JavaScript includes method passing in this dot search. So now we are filtering through these blog posts by the search term. We can now use these filter posts instead of all of our posts. So we're now going to loop through the filter posts and over to the browser. Let's try JavaScript and we'll see this works. And also Vue.js too. At the moment, we can see this works if we use the capital V. However, if we type this in as all lowercase, this no longer works. To improve this, we can go back down to the computed section and we can lowercase both the search and also the blog post body. This will mean that the user doesn't need to worry about if there's any capital letters in a word, the search will still work. So when we access the post.body, we can set this to be to lowercase. And we can also do the same with the search value. Okay, give this a save. Let's try this out in the browser. Let's go for view and it still works. And also the same for JavaScript too. So this makes our search a lot more inclusive, meaning the user doesn't need to worry about if there is a capital in any of the words. 
So this is it and this is how we can create a simple search facility using Vue.js.